today, Satan. Not today, Nick. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. Questions. Where's my cocktail? Where? That's my opinion. All right. You ruined it. You ruined it. You did. Uh, what the f is this? The lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. <laughs> you are the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. Hello everyone and before we start it is time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Rose Forever. They did this amazing bouquet of flowers with special oils that will make the roses last up to a year. This is the perfect gift for you, your mom, your wife, your husband, whatever you want to say, I'm sorry, I love you, I miss you, say it with these beautiful flowers. So if you want to get your bouquet right now, go to the link on the description below and use my discount code ANDY25 and you will get $25 off your order. Again, this is the perfect gift for anyone. So whatever you want to say, say it with roses from Rose Forever. Hello, Burberry Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Burberry Hills, and welcome to another day full of tea. It is St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day to every single one of you. And what better way to spend St. Patrick's Day than finally giving that full recap to that very anticipated episode of Vanderpump Rules. Girl, the way that everyone was so right about this episode really sent me like i was not like when andy cohen said it and then lisa and lala and sheena and like everyone was like pay attention pay attention you know it was like i need to watch this episode like at least three times to get all the red flags that this little bee was like putting out there it is insane and you know what's also kind of like you know like mind-blowing the fact that this episode was not re-edit like literally they were like you know what this episode is speaks by itself we're just going to put it out there as it is. We don't have to change anything. We don't have to read, edit anything, add or delete nothing. Like just as it is. It's even like wilder because watching this with Scandal Lenses, girl, it changed. Like every single thing, every single scene, their meaning changed so much because I can tell you that at that moment, the producers or whoever was, you know, running these episodes were like, oh, we're going to make this. We're going to make these people seem this way. We're going to, I mean, this is the narrative what we're going to follow. But now, knowing what we know about Scandal, it's kind of like, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those are not mean girls. Those are not this. This is not that. It changed the whole perspective. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Have you seen, there is this show on Netflix, I think it's called Kaleidoscope or something like that. And it's like eight episodes that you can watch on any order, you know, and depending on how you watch the episode, it, like, it, like your perception of the show will change. That's literally what happened, you know, like, like now that you know different information is the same episode, but like in a complete different way. So I want to go through like some of these things. Girl, we're, go we're going straight into, you know, the night after they're in Vegas, the night after um, uh, Rachel is making out with Oliver, you know, and she's being all weird in the bed. This is the first thing that I'm going to say. I'm sorry, but that was not drunk behavior. She was on something. She was on something. I don't know if it was weed, an edible, or something else. That's not drunk behavior, okay? Uh, she eating the food, like, and all of that. That I mean, I don't know. To me, that was not drunk behavior right there. Um, one minute into this new episode, and it's already cringy as fuck. Like, the words that are going to come from Raquel's mouth girl i was like oh my god like oh my god you know i love that again this episode was 
kind of like made to make seem like Katie and Lala were like these mean girls and uh, Christina, you know? Oh, they are like these mean girls who are, you know, making fun of poor little Raquel, you know? Oh my God, we need to feel so bad for poor little Raquel who is trying to, you know, have friends and live her life. And it's like the only thing that I could think was like a liar, liar, okay? Um, <clears throat> especially because I will die on the hill that Raquel was already hooking up with Sandoval. I feel that they have been hooking up since they, since she was with James Kennedy. And one day we will know the truth, but that's what I feel, you know? Um, so I'm feeling like she is the biggest hypocrite, fake, horrible person we have seen in reality TV. Do you think that my disdain for Lisa Rena was big? This bitch, it's already up here, okay? Like, Lisa Rena had nothing on this girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, okay, let's, let's move on. So, uh, Raquel, you know, when, when she sits down and then she's all, you know, like, like, well, don't have a man around me. You know, don't have your man around me. I know good thing that you don't have a man or you know some bullshit like that i'm like oh my god this bitch is literally saying i'm a proud home wrecker please you know this is wild wild you know and i think that honestly at that moment that was her subconscious putting things out there you know like yes I don't give a fuck about that, the fact that you're still married with, with shorts. You're separated, but you're still married with shorts. Um, I don't give a fuck that Oliver was still married. Yeah. And believe me, I don't give a fuck about anyone because I have been screwing Tom Sandoval for who, who knows how many months. Like, I think that was her subconscious uh, part of the brain talking through whatever she put in, you know? Um, let's see the okay so we I, I love okay when so she left you know and then she she's kind of like like uh ear, ear, ear how you said ear, ear dropping or no, ear what is the word latino moment guys well you know she's hearing what the other girls are saying are, are talking about her and i love it when she says like Ugh, the last thing that I wanted was to be judged for drinking. I was like, bitch, no one is judging you for drinking. Everyone is judging you for being a whore. That's why people are judging you, okay? Like, no one cares that you were drunk or high or drunk or whatever. No one give a shit about that. Um, look, many of these things, I mean, I, I'm reading from my Twitter. I usually, when I watch the episode, I'm, I'm go live like on Twitter so if you ever want to know what I'm actually thinking while I'm watching the episode, just follow me on my Twitter, RealAndyBH. Uh, but many of these, I just, I can't. You know, my scandal glasses, you know, they just took everything. And I, the only thing that I can think is like, liar, 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 bitch, 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 liar, you know? Um, the other one I put like, uh, two, 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 oh, shut up. No one believes Rachel doesn't remember what she said. You know, next day, when she sits down and she's like, oh my God, I don't remember. I think I say something offensive, but I don't remember anything that I said. Such a manipulation tactic 101 right there. Like, bitch, you were not drunk, okay? You were not drunk. So, shit, like, get the fuck out of here. Um, Raquel, then, okay, I think, let me find out. I think they are already in... Lake Havasu, and they are with Charlie. Or is the is it, I, I have I have a bunch of like like comments here, but at some point, you know, Raquel is calling Lala a hypocrite. How are you calling Lala a hypocrite? And I do have to say, I mean, look, I have read a lot of comments about this, that Lala, you know, she slept with with uh, James at the beginning of the relationship, that she, you know, apparently, you know, she was the other woman with with Randall. And we do have to di dissect every single uh, conversation. I do not agree with Lala 100% of the time, you know? And I do believe that, you know, even though they're saying that 
it was at the beginning of the relationship and you know and Raquel and and James were not that official and Lala and Randall were not that official it still is very shady that they have they, they hook up you know even though they're trying to blame on drinking it's still you know it's a shady situation now i do agree with lala on the randall situation because uh, because from what we know even said by randall ex-wife lala did not know that he was married when they start dating you know and eventually she find out you know and the rest is history so i don't know you know it's very weird because with lala I kind of like on her side when she's dragging Raquel because the Raquel deserve it. But I understand that she doesn't have the best moral authority to be saying any of that of this at that point. Because now after everything that has happened, of course, it's a different meaning. You know, of course, it's like, yeah, Lala is right 100% of the time, you know. But at that point, she really doesn't have that um, the thing. I think... I don't think she was jealous. I don't think she wanted Oliver. I think that Lala just plain hates Raquel, you know? And she was just waiting for any little things to just pick it up, you know, and destroy her. Um, but again, I am not mad because of what we know now, you know? So um, Raquel calling Lala a hypocrite, it's wild when you are literally sleeping with your friend's boyfriend. Like, it's wild that she will do something like this. Now, I do believe that Sheena and Schwartz friendship, it's real. You know, I think that scene, and when you see them together, I do feel that Sheena is, of course, 100% team team Schwartz. She has never really been on Katie's team, you know. And I do believe that she wants the best for him. And I think she's trying to help him, you know, with the clothes. And even, like, pushing Raquel on him was more like, like, hey, like, do something with your life, you know? Like, like move on. Like, like, Katie doesn't want anything to do with you. Why are you paying attention, right? And, and I understand because those are, like, the friends, the friend type of thing, you know? And I, and I think every single one of us will be doing the same thing, to be very honest. Um, however, I do think that Short is still grieving his divorce. I think that at that moment, you know, I think that, uh, that you can tell that he still is in love with Katie. And I do remember reporting back, back in the day when they were filming, you know, it was very hard on him. You know, he, he wore the ring for a very long time. He didn't want the divorce. You know, at some point he thought that they were going to be just separating. I mean, she ne he never thought that she will actually file for divorce. And I think he his his grieving process it's it was way longer than Katie's. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, let's see. <sighs> okay, now I think we're gonna go into the car. They're driving to Lake Havasu, and <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> So Rachel saying like, oh, being single is my new identity. Like, oh my God, before James was my identity. Now being single is my new identity. No bitch is sleeping with married men. That's your new identity. Okay. That's who you are right now and who are you are going to be for the next several months until you get caught. Okay. I mean, I feel look, and after this is the, 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 the she's still getting the anxiety attack. Honestly, I feel that the anxiety attack was because she was already sleeping with Sandoval and she knew, like she realized right there that one day she was going to get caught, you know, and that she was going to be trashed by the world. I think that was a big part of the thing because she, she never really gave a fuck about James. She didn't care about James. Literally on that conversation, she let us know that she was so done with James a long time ago, you know? So it, it was not about like, oh my God, I used to love James so much. No, bitch, there is something else. I'm telling you, she was sleeping with Sandoval. That's a feeling that I have. Um, and that's why the anxiety attack kick in. Now, I feel that, you know, eventually, and especially in that scene, 
the three of them, like Lala, Christina, and Katie, they were actually being such a good friends with uh, Rachel at that moment, you know? Uh, they were like trying to like like pick her up, you know, try like like be better, you know. And I think I cannot even imagine how it must be for them to rewatch the show like right now, how they feel about that moment in specific. Uh, I think there was a little scene at Tom Tom. The only thing that I could say is honestly, I cannot stand Tom Sandoval. His face. His words, the way he talks, his hair, his mustache. No, I can't. I just can't stand him. He is so annoying, so unfuckable, so like I can't. I'm sorry. It just it, I can't stand him. Now <clears throat> back to Lake Havasu, and they're going to dinner, and there's going to be this whole fight, and then Charlie start start starts to like really you know, um, defending uh, Raquel. And this is the perfect example. I am not mad at Charlie for defending Raquel at that moment because she didn't know anything. And she wasn't even at Las Vegas part of the, of the trip. So she doesn't know anything. So she, right there, what she's doing is defending her friend, you know. But at the same time, this is the perfect example why you should never never blindly being loyal to anyone, okay? Because you have no idea who are you putting your hands on the fire for, okay? I think Charlie never in a million years will be expecting that Raquel was sleeping with Sandoval and was using all of these men to cover an affair, you know? I think she never expects something like that. And I think if she knew that, back in that day she will have never defend raquel but you know she was being like a girl's girls you know and i'm going to defend my girlfriend i to anyone do not get involved in shit that is not about you because you have no idea i hate blind loyalty i hate it you know i don't give it and i don't expect it from everyone anyone you know because it's so stupid to defend someone when you have no idea where the truth actually is it's insane, you know. Oh, let's see. Oh, Rachel saying like, oh, I wish we could be friends. You know, I thought that they were my good friends. You know, do, do you really want to be friends with them? Because if you want to be friends with them, maybe you should stop sleeping with their man. Just, just a thought, you know, just a thought. Stop sleeping with them. Um, so and let me see. OK, so the mistress coming again. So this is what I put. So the thing with Lala is that she was a mistress, but to everyone's knowledge, including the ex-wife, she didn't know Randall was married. Rachel is literally going for men in relationship while sleeping with Tom Sandoval. So no, there is no comparison. I'm not saying that what Lala did is right, but there is no comparison. You cannot compare both situations because they are not the same. Okay, and then I this is the part that I was also like, oh, Rachel is such a liar. Okay, because Rachel goes on and she says, oh, I, I should have known better when I caught them, you know, speaking shit behind my back that night. Oh, so you remember, you remember them talking shit behind your back that, that same night. Oh, but you didn't remember next day what you said about sleeping with their men. Oh, okay. I got you. The lies, the lies, the lies. Um, now, okay, so this is, this is like, uh, there, there is, you know, they left. This is the part of the conversation I think uh, Lala is having with, with Katie about, do you miss Schwartz? Do you miss whatever, you know? And there was a part that I really didn't understand. So um, Katie says, there is a lot of things that I miss, you know? He was my best friend. It's just that at some point, I didn't want to be with my best friend or something like that. Or like, I, request, I, I require more than just going to bed with my best friend. And that part really... To me, 
it really doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to tell you what the real problem is between the two of them. Because to me, there is nothing better than going to bed with your best friend. Your best friend, if you have the luck in the world that your partner is your best friend, you will have the best relationship, you know, because you will enjoy the same things. You will laugh about the same things. Uh, they will make you laugh. They, you will agree in so many things. You know, you will have a very happy life and you will happy to say, this person is my best friend. Is the person that I trust no matter what, you know, like a hundred percent. So what she said right there, like, I didn't want to go to bed with my best friend anymore. It really doesn't make any sense. And I think the problem between Katie and Schwartz is that Katie never accepted uh, Schwartz, you know? Yes, Schwartz might not be the more, the most manly man, you know, the straightest toxic man out there. You know, he might not be that. He's very sensitive. He's very uh, nice. He has a different view of the world, you know, but that is who he is. And I think he never lied about it. I think he never was like pretending to be something that he's not. That, that's him. And the problem is that Katie never accepted Schwartz. If we rewatch Vanderpump Rules from the very beginning, the constant fights between Katie and Schwartz is because Katie was always expecting more from Schwartz. She always wanted Schwartz to do something that he did not want to do. She literally gave him an ultimatum to get married. You know what I mean? So that kind of things that doesn't build a relationship. That is not a real reason. And that's the problem. Katie never accepted Schwartz. On the other side, Schwartz always accepted Katie. You know, even when she was annoying, when she was drunk, when she was uh, angry, when she was good, and when, when they were good to each other, Schwartz always knew who Katie was, you know, and she, I think he kept ex expecting for her to change. And I think he will never, he was never going to break up the marriage because that's not his personality. You know, I think he was very content, you know, so... Um, I think that was a problem that Katie never really accepted Schwartz and she wanted to change him and she wanted to mold him into what she wanted. Now, there is nothing wrong into wanting something else, you know, but then you have to accept that it's not his fault either, you know. Maybe it wasn't even her fault. It's just like they, they were a victim of like a young love, you know, and then she was, she just was expecting that the war have to change to wherever she wants. And that's not how the war works. The best relationships are the ones where you accept each other no matter what. You know, I, I sometimes I see things like, well, if he really loves you, he has to change. No, it's not about changing. Yes, sometimes you grow up, you know, and, 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 and you grow up inside a relationship and you... Uh, change certain things, but you do it because of you, not because the other person wants to, right? So the best relationships is where you accept the other person the way they are, no matter what, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You accept them and they accept you and you never fight about their personality, what they like, what they dislike. That's not, that, that's not a reason to fight. And that's, that was not the case, you know? So, one day she will realize, well, I think when she find out that man that she wants, you know, she's going to realize that she's never going to have what she had with Schwartz. Okay. Um, okay. Then after that, that was very profound. <laughs> but after that, they go to um, this uh, bar. Okay, this is the gay guy in me talking, but I was like so triggered by that bar. I was like looking the whole thing, the vibe, the environment. I was like, oh no, I will be so bored in that bar. Like it looks so weird 
to me, you know, like to me, I'm, I'm more used to like the disco, you know, like the dancing and, and the craziness, you know, like it looked very country. Like they were right. Like this is America. Yes, they were right. And I was like, I, I like I was watching that and it was like, I don't feel safe. <laughs> you know, I don't feel safe. Um, and then, you know, Lala's definitely horny AF. And, you know, she goes after these guys and good for her. Do you do whatever you need to do. And then we're going to end up the show with Raquel and um, I think Charlie yeah, um, crashing boys night. Um, like the way they end up that episode, the look, the look on Sandoval, the smirk on his face. He knew that night that while Ariana was like crying on their bed, you know, because of her dog, he will be pounding that P-U-S-S-Y, you know. He knew that because they have already been doing it. They have already been doing it. I'm telling you. Whew. Anyways. Um, I, I wrote some comments out there being like, oh, why Ariana was not there, you know, and that, oh my God, Sheena, why is Sheena there? Sheena should be with Ariana. I love when, I mean, I don't love, I actually hate when people do comment on the first thing that it comes to their mind and that they don't really think about what is happening, you know. Of course, Sheena call Ariana. Of course, Sheena invite Ariana. Ariana is grieving. She doesn't want to be with anyone. She wants to be alone in her bed and she wants to do her own thing. So that doesn't mean that the world stops. The worlds continue, you know. Sheena, if Sheena calls her and say like, hey, do you want me to be right there with you? And Ariana says like, no, just I, don't, I want to be alone. I want to be alone. What do you want Sheena to do? You know, to like be like in front of her house waiting for Ariana to do something? No. Plus, it's not like it was the craziest part in the world. It was, they were just like having fun, you know, for a little bit. So anyways, um, yeah, just a little note because I read some comments, not too many, but I read some people being like, like, oh my God, why Ariana was not invited? She was invited. She didn't want to go. Okay. Now, the only thing that we can say is that maybe if Ariana wouldn't been there, then maybe Sandoval wouldn't have fucked Raquel that night. But still, it's not like this. it started there. So, whatever. So anyways, that's it. Oh my God, this was such a good review. But, you know, it, the episode itself was so good. You know, and I'm so... I, I was watching the trailer of the whole show of this season, you know, and I just realized we are on episode five. Guys, the amount of things that we still haven't watched. Insane. Insane. All right, guys, I'm very excited. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below. I'm going to be reading all of your comments and even the people on the chat, you know. So let me know everything, everything, you know. And um, thank you in advance to every single one of you who has been supporting my channel through super chats and super stickers and super thanks, you know, or checking on my merch or like anything. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, everything goes a very long way. And if you want to get all the tea related to Vanderpump Rules, girl, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe right now. We are very close to 30K, so subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye.